be honest. Am I hideous? <laughs> the guy in the audience just threw up. <laughs> No, he's all right. Yeah. That, that's how tough it is to do well in this studio. You get a round of applause from the audience if you vomit. The only thing about vomit is, you know, I hate to talk about vomit this early in the evening. For some people, it's early, you know. For people who are planning on vomiting later, it's quite early. Anyway, the thing is, I, there's a couple of things about vomit I don't like. One, well, there's nothing, nothing about vomit I do like, actually. I mean, if somebody said to me, what are the things you like about vomit? Um, the carotiness? I don't know. Anyway, I said to him, why, how did you, why did you throw up? And he said, painkillers in an empty stomach. And I'm thinking, pfft, tourist. <laughs> Sorry, kid, I know, you probably could tweet about me. Anyway, they, uh... <laughs> anyway, the thing is about, about vomiting is, is that whenever I, I've got, I'm one of these people, when I smell vomit, I have to vomit. <laughs> now, it hasn't reached me yet, but I'm warning you. <laughs> this could be the night where I could... <laughs> uh, it's, it's bad, I'm sorry, that's tasteless. It, it's not... A... It's a horrible thing to talk about. Let's talk about something else. Kittens. Aren't kittens lovely? <laughs> Do you know once I vomited on a kitten? <laughs> I did. I vomited on a kitten and I went, I don't remember eating that. Ah, <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. I would never vomit on a kitten. They're too adorable. I always find something not pleasant to vomit on. Like back in the day when I was drinking, I would usually find a member of Al Qaeda to vomit on. <laughs> Uh, how do you like that? Uh, G had this. Blah. <laughs> anyway, Christmas is coming. Yeah. But that, that, that's a big vomit season, Christmas, isn't it? It is. It is. A lot of people, you know. Uh, do you want to know something? Uh, this is true, right? It's, it's a bit controversial of me to say this, but I'll tell you the truth. I. Uh, I took heroin twice in my life, right? And whenever you take heroin, you, you kind of vomit, right? You vomit a lot. That's one of the things where people get stomach upsets. Except when I took it, it made me hungry. <laughs> and I, so I took the heroin, and, and then I'm like, oh, let's get some pizza. <laughs> and the other people who I've taken heroin with are like, yeah, you can't order pizza, man. We're on heroin. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, and now we have rules? <laughs> we have rules. We take heroin, and we have rules. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad that that's a boof, that's a tough drug. Ugh. Ugh. You know the drug I like now? Happiness. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you very much, please, everyone. You stop. <laughs> and B.
because he seemed so sincere. And then suddenly it wasn't there. It was almost as if you had been coaxed into something. That kind of insincerity makes me want to vomit. It smells a bit like vomit in here. But I think that's me. It's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It's, um, I know I'm very excited that, about that segment, too. Now, listen, quietly. All right, knock it off. No, really, that's enough. <sighs> You've used up all my goodwill. Now I'm in a bad mood with you. It is a great day, and I'll tell you why. Because it's Monday, everybody. Uh, uh. Is it? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm sorry. We were too busy applauding. The days just flew by. Yes, it's Monday. Tis the Monday before Christmas, and all through the house, deedly deedly mouse. And it, this is a very... Sp <laughs> deedly deedly mouse. You can't write that kind of stuff. Um, the, uh, it's a great day, uh, for the comedian Andy Dick. It's his birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Mr. Dick. And... <laughs> oh, please, don't start that again. Andy shares his birthday with, uh, communist dictator Joseph Stalin. <laughs> That's true, who was born 130 years ago, uh, today. Now, Joseph Stalin and Andy Dick, very different, of course. One is amongst the most despicable human beings who ever lived, and the other one is Joseph Stalin. So, right... <laughs> I'm kidding, that's a joke. That's a, a joke on this show? We thought we'd try it in the run-up to Christmas. Anyway, Andy Dick's not that bad. He's just another innocent victim of my pointless rage. My pointless and impotent rage. Impotent? Only my rage. How are your trousers? Just fine, thank you for asking. By trousers, I mean penis. Uh, anyway, listen, I had a very busy weekend. Really? You had a busy weekend already? Yes, I did. I, I was out this weekend, and I, I bought a Christmas tree for my house. Well, you know, for everyone in my house, not just for my house. It's like, there you go, house, Merry Christmas. I, now, when I was single, I'd, I just had a drawing of a tree taped to the fridge. That was it, you know. But now, you know, that and my mistletoe underpants. But now that I'm married... I have a big domestic, -y, you know, Christmas. I like, you know, I buy the Christmas tree. And we went to the uh, big parking lot tree sales. And it, here in LA, you can buy trees in the same parking lots that sold pumpkins last month. So in December, they sell Christmas trees. In November, they sell pumpkins. And in the summer, they sell crack. That's true. <laughs> that, that is true. You go to the Christmas tree lot in the summer, you can buy crack cocaine, crack corn, crack larange, crackaroni. <laughs> Crackaroni and cheese. I can't believe it's not crack. Uh, anyway, when you're shopping for your tree, it's very important to examine it first. Does it have all its needles? Are there any critters living in it? Bugs, chipmunks, Baldwins? Does it have any? <laughs> Does it have any dents in it from uh, Tiger Woods or something like that? <laughs> Whoa, uh, oh. That's right. Oh, me. I'm the bad guy. That, mm, let's just, let's review the facts. Who was the one that was having, that had 14 mistresses? Me? No, no. <laughs> yes, but you're not good at golf. I see your point. <laughs> anyway, when I put my tree up in the living room and my dog got confused and peed on it. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. No, he did not learn that from me. As soon as he saw the tree, he went, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I have to be honest, I find the whole process of picking out a tree quite depressing. It reminds me, I used to work in landscaping with my Uncle James, and we had to chop down trees. I didn't like it. He would say, oh, just chop it down. I, I didn't enjoy it. It's like that story about George Washington and his father. Uh, what was his father's name? Denzel Washington. <laughs> what I'm saying is I don't like chopping down trees. I like fake trees. fake trees and no real trees get hurt. You can keep them the, the, you're right. in Los Angeles. We want our trees to be like our boobies. Big, fake, always on display. That's how we like them. 
Do you know, and it's, I, I, love it, I love it when women go, you know they're not real, and we have to say as gentlemen all together, we don't care. <laughs> it's just like going, oh, wow. <laughs> I think we should have a big celebrity benefit to help save Christmas trees. You know, we are the trees. <laughs> We are the lumber, <laughs> so don't cut us down every December. <laughs> yeah, you're right, we shouldn't bother with that. You know that um, Teddy Roosevelt actually banned Christmas trees from the White House for environmental reasons. Then George Bush wanted to ban them again, but not for environmental reasons. It was because Cheney kept using the pine needles to stick people with. <laughs> Answer the question. Answer the question. <laughs> I'll give you a Merry Christmas. Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I met him, right? I'm still kind of like traumatized by it. <laughs> anyway, growing up, we always had a green plastic tree in our house, and I always envied the people who had silver pra plastic trees. <laughs> plastic trees? <laughs> don't do that accent. I won't do that accent. I'll do the Scottish accent, like always. <laughs> anyway, I, I envied the people that had the silver plastic trees because I thought they were rich. I, I thought that if people were rich if they had silver trees heating in a carpet. I thought, look at them. <laughs> and our uh, plastic tree came in a big box, and when you took it out, it unfolded like one of those uh, things that Tom Cruise uses in Mission Impossible. It was like... <laughs> Actually, the most amazing device Tom Cruise used in those movies is that box he used to stand on to kiss the girl. In there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Blame me. Blame me. Do you know, what people often ask me, what would your show look like, Craig, if Tom Cruise hosted it? I'll show you. Like that. A Sean Connery holiday memory. That was Christmas, 1962. <laughs> it was cold and bitter and overcast, and that was inside my house. <laughs> my wife was angry because I slept with a department store Santa. What can I say? There's just something about a fat guy with a giant bag. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, yeah, well, Christmas is coming, of course. Um, <laughs> Christmas is coming, it's just a few days away, and a big part of the holiday season is helping those in, in need. Uh, we've invited a very uh, special guest to tell us more about it. Please welcome a bell ringer from the Salvation Army, everybody. A bell ringer from the Salvation Army. expected to see you in a Santa costume. Why? Oh, because most of the costumes you've seen me in uh, are made of leather. <laughs> we were never supposed to talk about that. Do I need to get the ball gag? No, no, no. It's just that yeah, usually Santa Claus is a, is a man. <laughs> Hell, I'm more of a man than you'll ever be. <laughs> Want to arm wrestle? No, I don't want to arm wrestle. I just had a manicure. So what? What made you? Uh, what made you decide to work with the Salvation Army? Well, Craig, I love bells. <laughs> There's nothing like the feeling of a big pair of bells in my hand. All right. Uh, I'll, uh, 
I, I better let that go. I, I, it, must feel, it must feel good to help people, though, Betty. Not really. No? I just needed some cash. I spent all my money on medical bills. Betty, I, th I didn't know you were having medical issues. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. I, it's my medical marijuana bills. <laughs> They think I have glaucoma, but I just throw some crazy-ass parties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you plan to make your money back as a bell ringer? I thought it was a volunteer job. Oh, it is. But people put a ton of cash in this tip jar. Betty, that's, that's not a tip jar. That's the donation bucket. Oh, whoopsie. My bad. All right, now, Betty. I consider myself a charitable person, but a lot of times, I must admit, when I see the bucket, I just, I just, you know, I just walk right past. I don't even look. Oh, I just, I go Craig, by, I know. It I know. is so easy to give. Just stuff a few dollars in the um, crack. I mean, just pretend you're at a gay strip club. Well, I, I, if I if I'm at a gay strip club, I'm usually the one on the stage. <laughs> What about our time here, Betty? You know that. Is there anything you'd like to say before you leave? Sure, Craig. All right. Remember, if you have a spare 20 this year, this Christmas, I know it's hard, but do the right thing. Yeah, please do. Give, give some money to charity. No. <laughs> Buy my movie, The Proposal, on DVD. <laughs> hey, Betty White's got to eat. Hey, White, everybody. We'll be right back. All right, Betty White. A Sean Connery holiday memory. 1973. During a period of uncertain faith, I decided to give Judaism a try. <laughs> On the fourth night of Hanukkah, I came to the conclusion it wasn't for me. The most difficult part was reattaching my foreskin. Hi, everybody. Come on in and sit a spell. We're having the big Monday night run up to Christmas show. If you tuned in to see Quentin Tarantino, I'm afraid he's not here tonight. He's got laryngitis, which is what people in the movie business call alcohol poisoning. I think what happened is he got nine or something Golden Globe nominations and he went, oh, Ooh la la! I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we read the emails? I don't know. I'd rather. Yes! Yeah! All right. Uh... You know, I gotta. I gotta be honest with you. I gotta be honest with you. I thought the smell of vomit would affect the show. <laughs> But I think it's going okay. I think there's no way we've, we've already shot segments of this show that we thought were so bad we were going to throw them out entirely. <laughs> because <laughs> do you want to know a secret about what I do here? I have an extra comfortable cushion on my chair. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little thing to stuff in your Christmas stocking. <laughs> Did you know that the Scottish Conan guy has a cushion under his bottom? <laughs> Why does he have it? Because he's lost a bit of weight recently and he finds his ass a little bony and uncomfortable. <laughs> I do, I lost a little bit of weight. My ass has become a lot less comfortable. <laughs> it used to be, it was lovely. I, it was like having a lazy boy. I could move around, it was fantastic. A little bit of weight off. <laughs> so I'm going to put it back on over Christmas. <laughs> All right, this is from uh, La Rose in uh, Centennial in Colorado. <laughs> La Rose. La Rose, that's one of those names you don't know if it's a guy or a woman. <laughs> well, it kind of is. You know, please welcome La Rose. 
Is that a dude? I don't know. Check her hands. Look and see if she's got an Adam's apple. Da -da -da -da. There's no business like show. Anyway, La Rose in Centennial, Colorado says, uh, I thought it would, uh, I would apply for tickets to your show, but I decided against it. I'm afraid all the lights would go out or the roof would leak or my seat would explode. <laughs> I'll stick with TV. Uh, I think that's true because there's any chance you can come to the show and someone could vomit right on you. Are you all right, kid? Are you all right? Are you all right? All right. Poor kid, he threw up because he was nervous. Were you nervous? Is that what you... No, no, it was the painkillers, that's right. I forget, yeah. Uh, this is from Elisa in Boise in Idaho. Boise. <laughs> uh, dear Craig Ferguson, very formal, thank you very much, Elisa from Boise. Uh, I like your show because your set looks like the inside of a ship and you are the drunken, debaucherous captain <laughs> sailing it around aimlessly. <laughs> that be right. Yeah. There's nothing I like better than a bit of vomit. Ah. Vomit, rum, buggery, and the lash. This is from Nancy in Montreal. Ah, you can tell you in the world. Craig, I didn't know you spoke French Canadian. Ouais. <laughs> do you enjoy the Cirque du Soleil? I do, where they, they have the people balancing to the sound of Enya music. That's awesome. <laughs> Nancy in Montreal says, Dear Craig, do you think butterflies remember life as a caterpillar? <laughs> no, I think what happens is that caterpillars uh, are a bit like um, unreliable alcoholics. And what they do is that they roam around on the tree and then chrysalis is kind of like rehab. And then when they come out of rehab, they don't remember anything, but they've got nicer colors on them. <laughs> Do you know what would make this better? If only former President George W. Bush would come <laughs> in. Don't try and figure it out. Don't try and figure it out. You'll never learn my secrets. This is from Andre in a, a village in Romania. Look, that's what he put, a village in Romania. That'd be an odd thing to put in you. Romania's where Dracula's from, isn't it? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Welcome, Andre, if that is truly your name. I like it in Dracula movies when Dracula pretends not to be Dracula by using different names, like he says, Good evening, I am Dr. Acula. <laughs> My name is Sebastian Alucard. <laughs> Anyway, Andre, if that truly is your name, says, uh, all of last week's shows were hilarious. Are they going to be the same from now on? No, it was an accident. <laughs> Trust me, we're back on track this week. <laughs> all right, this is uh, from Amanda in uh, St. Louis in Missouri. She says, what's up, Craig? Oh, what up, Amanda? Uh, <laughs> What up? Mm -hmm. It's all good, G-Funk. Uh, that is like 15 years old, that crap. And I, just, uh, I was like, middle-aged white guy trying to be cool. What up, G-Funk? And all the kids are like, Bleh! All right, all right, all right. Amanda says, uh, what's up, Craig? What's up, Amanda? Uh, on Tuesday, I'm moving to Australia for a year. When I land, I will write you another email and let you know that I got there okay. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's not the getting to Australia that's the problem, Amanda. It's the staying alive once you're there. <laughs> They've got the deadliest spiders, they've got the deadliest uh, snakes, they've got deadly crocodilios, they've got, uh, they got uh, giant um, uh, things that come onto the land and bite you. And, and then there's Australians. Let's imagine for a moment, let me an illustration for you, it'll probably help this. Let's see. Let's see, uh, all right, this is a scale. I'll do a little graph. Here's what I'm doing. Uh, crazy drunkenness. Um, drunkenness. All right, this is a crazy drunkenness chart. Now, right here, I'm gonna put Scottish people. Right here. All right. Here, Irish. Over here, right? Here, Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland, right? And then... <laughs> Australians. Uh, so, so there's what, then you got the, that. Then you've got that. And then there's, you got your Australians up there at the end. So, right there is your problem. However, I will say this. I have been to Australia twice in my life, and I had a fantastic time. And if I could remember it, <laughs> I'd write and apologize to everyone I met there. So when you get to Australia, Amanda, if that truly is your name, <laughs> Dr. Acula, please apologize to Australia for me and know that the next time I visit, I'll be completely sober. <laughs> Which I think they won't enjoy. <laughs> so anyway, send us an email when you land and I'll, you know, completely ignore it. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. is a celebrated opera soprano. Uh -huh. <laughs> which means that's not the way she sings. She's, uh, she's got a new CD out, which is uh, Verissimo, which is uh, Italian for alcoholic poisoning. <laughs> but she's been nominated for a Grammy, so congratulations. She's here performing a selection from Giordano, the lovely Renee Fleming, everybody, <laughs> Renee Fleming.
range down. Some of us are trying to sleep. Why, I'm so angry I could cuss. <laughs> But of course, for legal reasons, I won't. <laughs> My next guest is a very funny comedian. You can catch him at the Comedy Magic Club in Hermosa Beach. <laughs> which is in California. Please welcome the extremely talented Jim McDonald, everybody. Come on. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> hey, you guys sound good. I'm in a good mood, too, because I just got my hair cut at the barber college. <laughs> I go there because it's half price. This particular style is called uh, C minus. <laughs> my friend Richard spends $85 on his haircuts. To me, that's just way too much money. If you spent $85 at the barber college, you could graduate. <laughs> My uncle started losing his hair, so he bought a toupee. He told me it's just like a woman getting breast implants. <laughs> and he might be right, because even though I know it's wrong, every time I see him in that toupee, I really want to touch it. <laughs> But you gotta try and look good. Last week I got a new electronic toothbrush, 3,000 strokes a minute. I've been using it for seven days and already my teeth are 17% whiter and 20% smaller. <laughs> Last month I got my teeth whitened with a laser. They put me in a room, they pointed a laser at my teeth and they left me alone for an hour. So when they were gone, I used it to burn all the hair off my butt. <laughs> My teeth are clean, my hair is gone, and my butt is 17% whiter. <laughs> I'm also working out. I think the kind of workout you choose says a lot about your personality. Like my friend Nick takes boxing classes, and I do yoga. So if we're in a bar and a fight breaks out, he wants to be able to defend himself, and I want to be able to squeeze out of an eight-inch bathroom window. <laughs> Because I will not fight for any reason. Some guys try and provoke you. Your girlfriend's ugly. Oh, yeah? Well, you should see her without makeup. <laughs> and because I won't fight, my macho brother doesn't think I'm a man. One time we were at the beach, he refused to rub sunblock on my back because he thought we'd look gay. <laughs> then he said he'd do it if we went in the bathroom and locked ourselves in a stall. <laughs> Even my gay friends won't do that. <laughs> Last month after a show, a guy came up to me and goes, are you serious? You really have gay friends? Well, how do you feel about gay marriage? I said, look, man, we just met. We should go out a few times. <laughs> my mom's desperate to get me married, but she's very indirect. She'll say stuff like, I don't want to pressure you, but I want to have grandkids before I die. <laughs> and I'll say, I don't want to pressure you, but you might want to have another baby. <laughs> I don't know about kids. My brother's got three kids I went to visit. I had no idea how much work children can be. These kids wake up every day. <laughs> the kids are expensive. I took my nephews to Disneyland. It cost $180 to get them inside. Six hours later, they told me they were tired. So look, I'm tired too, but for $180, we are hiding in the bathroom till they open tomorrow. <laughs> my friend Tom tells me I shouldn't get married till I find my soulmate. I asked what that was, and he goes, that's a woman who thinks exactly like you do. Well, no wonder why I can't find her. <laughs> she doesn't want to get married either. 
My last girlfriend broke up with me because she's a vegetarian and I eat meat. So she was always on my case. If you knew what went on behind the scenes at the slaughterhouse, you would become a vegetarian. Look, I used to work at a restaurant. If you knew what went on behind the scenes at the salad bar, <laughs> you would become an alcoholic. <laughs> That's it for me. Thank you very much, everybody. You know, since I lost weight in my ass, I just can't get comfortable. <laughs> if only I had something comfortable to sit on. <laughs> like a friend. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to go into uh, one of them lazy boy stores and say, I'm looking for a comfortable chair in which to sit down and drink beer in. Do you have anything? <laughs> because I think they probably do. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lazy boy. At what point is it okay to get a lazy boy? When you, I guess when you think saying, what up G-Funk is still cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when did that go out, what up G-Funk? That was like out with new kids on the block or something, wasn't it? <laughs> what up G-Funk? Waka 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 waka, hey! <laughs> Crack a lackin'. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Hey, does it look like I'm really fat? <laughs> Look at the room in here since I lost that weight. Look, you know what I used to keep in here? My ass. <laughs> ah, I used to have to clench it around. It was so big. <laughs> clench it around. Um, well, let's see. This has been the 1004th show. And I think we'll all forget this one. <laughs> All of us except me. I'll remember it forever. I swear to God, do an army. I will come up there and I will take your purse. All right, we gotta go. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night.